Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And we're just gonna start the hammer! Let's go! Yes! Oh man, I can't wait to crush something <laughs> with this, but I can't because it's for, uh, it's for gym, gym use. use only. Do not strike hard surfaces. So, that, that's... Uh, I guess just put it on the set. I mean, it's cool though. <laughs> You're watching Tesla Time News. Episode 396, and we have number 67. Just two off. On oh, now you know. Male pattern baldness is a genetic condition that affects two out of every three guys by the time they're 35. That's something I didn't want to leave to chance, so I tried Keeps. Professional care for hair loss from the comfort of my home, without ever visiting a doctor's office or pharmacy. Because why would you want to visit a doctor's office if you don't have to? Keeps is super easy to order. It's super easy for me because it only takes seconds to apply the foam or drops. I completed an online consultation to get matched with a provider who tailored a treatment plan to address my hair loss concerns. All treatment plans are personalized to address your unique needs and recommended by a licensed medical provider specially trained in men's hair loss. Treatment is delivered right to your door and your schedule with the flexibility of three, six, and 12-month delivery options, and it comes in discreet packaging. Plus, you can adjust, pause, or cancel your plan at any time. Keeps offers treatments that are clinically proven to work. Whether you're looking to prevent hair loss, stimulate hair growth, or just take better care of the hair that you have, Keeps has you covered. Keeps offers both of the FDA-approved hair loss treatment options, as well as a two-in-one treatment that combines both treatments. Most men using Keeps notice results within six months of starting treatment. Thanks to Keeps for sponsoring this video. Head on over to keeps.com slash now you know to get a special offer. Individual results may vary. Oh my God, did you read this article in Reuters that Tesla isn't going to make the sub $25,000 Robo taxi, and then Reuters published another article citing their first article saying, What is Tesla? For now, it's the world's largest electric car maker, though maybe not for long. No. Hopes of keeping the crown have rested on a long promised $25,000 model. If the project gets scrapped, as Reuters reported on Friday, boss Elon Musk has one remaining advantage using Tesla's data trove to develop self driving technology. It would be very risky and also very Musk. Tesla is in a bind. Visions of growing by 50% annually until it sells twice as many cars as Toyota Motors look dashed. Car deliveries are falling. Chinese rivals like BYD and Xiaomi are releasing cheap, compelling options, shrinking Tesla's share in China to less than 7%. Its slug of the US market dipped below 50% for the first time last year. Profitability is shrinking. Oh my God, Tesla's dying. It's the end, everyone, it's the end. So I guess you didn't see Elon's ex post that came out right after? He said, Reuters is lying again. And then he said, Reuters is dying. No, no, I didn't see that. Well, Holmar's catalog just said, just read the full Reuters article. You can tell the authors hate Tesla and have zero understanding of how they became the best-selling EV brand in the world. Very biased framing. And then Elon said, 100, Reuters is the liar champion among legacy press organizations. Sawyer Merritt said, Elon just said Reuters was lying. However, here is my general thinking. Tesla's low-cost $25,000 car and the robo-taxi were always going to be based on the same platform. They were going to be very similar, but the $25,000 version was going to have a steering wheel. Maybe Elon and the team have been so impressed with how good full self-driving 12 has performed, and maybe they were thinking they should be shifting even more resources to the robo-taxi slash full self-driving effort. This doesn't mean that the $25,000 car is canceled. Again, they share the same platform. And then Elon responded with the two eyeballs emoji, and Sawyer said, I'll take that as confirmation. But I think this is really the end of Tesla because for the first time, Tesla delivered less cars than the preceding quarter. Oh my God, Tesla is dying. We need to fire the Tesla board. I mean, Ross Gerber said, for over a year, I've been warning about this potential reality. Now it's here. It's time for shareholders to assess the blame where due. The Tesla board of directors should be replaced immediately with independent directors as required by law. Well, I like Elon's response. He's such an idiot that he can't even tell he's an idiot. BYD sales dropped by 42% from last quarter. This was a tough quarter for everyone. So yes, Tesla only sold 386,810 vehicles in the quarter, and it was the first time in just two quarters that Tesla sold less cars than the previous quarter. Yeah, but Jesse, Tesla is only a car company, and now car sales are down. So again, it is over for Tesla. What are we gonna do? Wait, is the sky falling? I think the sky's falling.
But how about a little bit of perspective here? Okay. Holmar's catalog put it this way. Number one, in the future, every car will be full self-driving and electric. Number two, every car Tesla makes is self-driving and electric, and they are the world leaders in EV sales. Number three, as robot cars eat the auto market, Tesla will be the overwhelming benefactor. And Elon said, yeah, should be obvious. And he went on to say, and we will license the tech to other car companies. Holmar's catalog continued. He said full self-driving licensing. One, allow OEM to integrate into any car for free or at cost. Car owner pays for full self-driving license. Two, active safety and basics come free. Three, leverage supercharger deals. Offer same pricing as Tesla cars for EVs that integrate full self-driving and shared data. And Elon said Tesla would be happy to do such deals. Holmar's catalog went on. He said full self-driving licensing earnings will exceed Tesla's auto business earnings. And Elon says good chance that that turns out to be true. Oh, okay. So I'm feeling a little better now. And look, we understand for those people out there who have never heard of Tesla full self-driving because big auto and legacy media don't want them to know full self-driving must make no sense to them, right? Make it make sense. So when they see a post like this, Tesla AI says hit over a billion miles driven on full self-driving and just take one second to look at that chart. Do you wonder why the chart has gone up so much in the last few days? Yeah, because people must be like, I have no idea what you're talking about. But we all know what they're talking about, right? More than a billion miles of potential training data. This is just one of the reasons why Tesla is so far out in front on autonomous driving technology. And Elon said, won't be long before Tesla exceeds 10 billion miles of full self-driving. 100 billion. And I just want to point out that Jesse never liked using it until about two weeks ago. Yes. And now he won't stop using it. I have to be honest, right? Like I was honest up until this point. Lots of people hated me for it. They're like, Jesse, screw you. You're lying. You're it's perfect. Full self-driving is perfect. It wasn't perfect. And it's not perfect now. I, I'll, I will continue to be honest. It's not perfect now, but it is so much better than it was before yeah. that I feel comfortable using it on a pretty much daily basis. I, I did not before. I would only use it on just just for a minute, just like, oh, I need to take my jacket off and I'll and I'll and I'll take right back over because I would be worried about it. I am not feeling that way anymore. Full self-driving 12.3, which is the one that I have, is really, really good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. It's not perfect, but it is really, really good. And I and I can see the improvement of how they're gonna get there. And you know, for the past few weeks, all we've seen in the legacy media is story after story about how Tesla delivery numbers are gonna be bad. Disastrous first quarter. But here's the thing, the legacy media can get away with this because most people in the world aren't like you watching right now. They don't know that Tesla is more than a car company. And don't know about this little thing called autonomy that Tesla has figured out. And they certainly don't know that very soon we will all be riding in robo taxis. But Zach and Jesse, robo taxi isn't real. It will be soon. Elon posted this on Friday. Tesla RoboTaxi unveil on 8-8. Sawyer Merritt said, the number eight is considered the luckiest number in Chinese culture. It's associated with wealth, prosperity, and success. And Elon said, 8-8 and year of the dragon. So August 8th and the year of the dragon. When, when is that? This year. This year, right? <laughs> It's this you're, year. You're I worried that he meant it was some. I don't. I'm not. I don't usually. I, I'm like a 2020 kind of guy. You right. know. I. That's how I keep track of my years. I'm not. Gotcha. I'm no, not going like the year of the bull year. or whatever. Yeah. Right. It's it's a summer. Okay. And as Tesla employee Troy Jones posted, shh, the secret master plan continues. And Elon said, "Yep." So, do you think that Tesla Robo Taxi will first begin in China? Since he talked about eight and eight and China and Year of the Dragon. Uh, I don't know. I mean, there have been lots of companies that are doing full self-driving e things in China. So right. obviously the government there uh, uh, doesn't care. Well, you know, we have a Patreon poll this week. So later on the show, we'll see what our patrons think. All right. And we're going to talk a lot more about this on this week's Patreon Investor Club bonus story. So don't miss it. But I think Alex sums it up well. He said, I strongly recommend anyone who still claims that Tesla is a car manufacturer to use this weekend wisely. Think hard about it and change your stance because from here, it gets really embarrassing. And Elon said, Tesla is an AI robotics and sustainable energy company. So Sir Mayor posted this, news Tesla has reduced mega pack pricing by about $10,000. And Holmar's catalog said, we need a mega pack Super Bowl ad. And Elon said, production rate and fully considered cost are the challenges. Demand for stationary batteries is super high. I think Tesla might end up doing more more total jewels in stationary than mobile long-term. 
And I think what he's saying there is we don't need an ad for this product because everyone wants it. Then Sawyer Mayer posted news. Tesla's computer vision chief, Ethan Knight, has left Tesla and has joined Elon Musk's XAI company. Elon said Ethan was going to join OpenAI, so it was either XAI or them. They've been aggressively recruiting Tesla engineers with massive compensation offers and have unfortunately been successful in a few cases. He went on to say, Ethan is very talented, but vision chief would be overstating things. There are over 200 excellent engineers in the Tesla AI autonomy team. Tesla's pace of progress with autonomy is accelerating. The talent war for AI is the craziest talent war I've ever seen. And Sawyer Merritt asked, is Tesla matching these compensation offers? Or is it more that these employees just want to switch things up so matching wouldn't matter? And Elon said, Tesla is increasing compensation contingent on progress milestones for our AI engineering team. All right, so Elon is referring to Ethan Knight, and a lot of media outlets are making a big deal out of the fact that Knight was the fourth Tesla machine learning engineer to leave Tesla for XAI in a month. Oh my God, the fourth engineer to leave. You do know that all of Elon's companies attract some of the best talent in the world, right? It's not like Tesla will have any trouble recruiting other great engineers to work on FSD. Also, I'm sorry, but have you driven full self-driving version 12.3 lately? Which other company has developed an autonomous driving system that works as well as Tesla's? I, I thought so. Right. So scrape the bottom of the FUD barrel all you want and do your best to come up with these moronic stories about Tesla's imminent failure. And why don't you short Tesla stock while you're at it? See where that gets you. So we reported last week that Tesla's head of policy, Rohan Patel, said that Tesla in Australia was just getting started with 100,000 cars on the road there. Well, I guess he was right. This article from The Driven, EV sales hit record high in March as Tesla Model Y overtakes Toyota Hilux. Yeah, the month of March in Australia saw a new monthly high of 10,548 EV sales. That is the first time that monthly sales of EVs have surpassed 10,000. EV sales in Australia are now 9.5% of the new car market in Australia, and the Tesla Model Y is the number one best-selling EV in Australia. So about 100,000 Teslas on Australian roads. How many EVs total? Uh, I just read 112,000. Wow, so Teslas make up about 89% of EVs on the road in Australia. That's right. Wow. But I think they have a demand problem. <laughs> hey, if you want to help more people see the show, hit the like button. It really helps the algorithm do its thing. All right, so Elon said they'd only do it one time, but it appears Tesla is offering it again. You're talking about the full self-driving transfer, right? Yeah, remember Elon said this back in Q3 of 2023. He said, this is a one-time amnesty. You need to take advantage of it in Q3, or at least place the order in Q3 within reasonable delivery time frame. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Hope this makes people happy, but want to, I mean, this is a one-time thing, okay? But it appears as of last Friday, Tesla is again offering the FSD transfer on top of all the other incentives so you can stack them until the end of this quarter as a sales boost. This is for all vehicles except Cybertruck. Darn. So until June 30th. That seems right. Wow. Yeah. Okay. You got some time. And I guess the question is, is this just going to become a thing? I hope it is because Sparky doesn't have full self-driving, even though I paid for it back in 2016. Right. I don't think it ever will. <laughs> No, they'd have to rip the car apart, add a crap load of cameras and a new computer, and uh, that would cost more money than pretty much giving you a new car. Right. I think that it, it does make sense for them to do this. I think that it allows people to upgrade their cars, which a lot of people want to do most of the time. Most people don't want to hold on to their cars for 12 years, although lots of Tesla people do love holding on to their cars. Well, and if you want to update your car to get a new color, check mm -hmm. this out. On Joe Tegmeyer's Friday drone video flyover of Giga Texas, he spotted these. Dusty model wise. I mean, so what? No, no, no. Look, look closer. Wait, what color is that? That appears to be the metallic Quicksilver that up until now had only been available from Giga Berlin. But the weird thing is that as of today, I went on their website and not one of the colors available seems to be Quicksilver. Hmm. So I don't get it. That's weird. What's going on? Comment below. Yeah, and, maybe, uh, maybe it's just coming out in a few days or something. I don't know. That's exciting. Yeah. All right. So a Tesla driver in Fort Lauderdale, Florida walked away after a piece of a crane fell on his car. That's my Tesla. It landed on me. It sheared off the front and I just went, walked away. And Tesla North America said, glad he's okay. And Elon said, safety is Tesla's top priority. And Gail Alfar's husband walked away. Gail posted, our Model 3 is totaled, but my husband is alive. He was hit by a man who ran a red light. And according to the police report, he was a DUI and undocumented. He was taken to jail. I am distraught, but grateful the love of my life is alive. He told me he thought he was going to die. And Elon said, glad he's okay. So two crashes in one week, both saved by their Teslas. Yeah, you won't hear that in the mainstream media. No. They only like it when people die. Yeah. They love it when people <laughs> die. No, someone died today. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to bring you some news where somebody didn't die today. All right, it's time for the Cybertruck Roundup. Yeehaw! 
the Cybertruck Roundup. Before we get started on Cybertruck Roundup, I should check our Tesla account to see. I think we're lucky enough to get the Cyber Hammer. You know, I just don't think that we're going to What? 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 Gotta change my t-shirt. <laughs> what you got rid of your shirt that says my next truck will be cyber? Cause our cyber truck's being delivered as we speak. App just told me so. <laughs> Picking it up in PBD. <laughs> right. I get to bring the cyber hammer. Yeah. You get to try it out. Mm. Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe just a tire. I'll go to Harbor Freight, we'll get the dead blow hammer. All right, so uh, when's it coming? Let me check. Gotta change my t-shirt again. Um, okay. I don't know, so I'm gonna guess <laughs> two weeks. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we're gonna talk at the end of the show. There's a lot of things that go on in Massachusetts getting a car that slowed things up. So yeah, we'll talk about that. But I am super excited. This is great news. And speaking of Cybertruck, Kim Kardashian seems to like her Cybertruck. Remember last week we posted her like little modeling thing? Yeah. Now she's out and about getting coffee in it. <laughs> great. Awesome. A Cybertruck Owners Club member, Cybertruck 1974, got this Wilco off-road swiveling spare tire holder. Neat. So it swivels out of the way so you can still access the vault? Yeah. And so I Gotta guess- Gotta put stuff in my vault. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you wanted a spare tire, this is, according to him, pretty much the only way to do it in this kind of configuration. That's cool. Do, do you have to bolt it to the frame? Uh, no, it goes right in the tail hitch. Oh. So a lot like our uh, e-bike holder. That's awesome. It just holds a, a spare tire for you. Love it. And I really like the suction cup mount for Starlink on the Cybertruck. What is the uh, hacksaw doing there? So they uh, they took the normal stand for the original Dishy McFlat face uh -huh. and they hacksawed off uh, kind of the the regular feet that come with it. Oh, and replaced it? And replaced it with some suction cups. That's cool. So then you can have internet while you're on the road. We had a video where we actually did this. We had to do it with the Ford because we didn't have the Cybertruck at the time. So you can check that out. I think, yeah, I think we were the first to game with uh, Starlink. Yeah, yeah, first CSGO kill on the moving with Starlink. In an electric vehicle. I'm calling it. <laughs> if anybody wants to disagree with me, you let me know down in the comments. So I thought that this one was interesting. We get to see a Cybertruck that has been in a collision with mm. this other car. Oh. Now, the interesting thing here is that it does look a little bit beat up, but look mm -hmm. at the other car. Wow. Missing Totaled. basically the whole front. Yeah. Um, and the glass is not broken on the Cybertruck. Mm. Now, the tires are all popped, mm -hmm. and I'm assuming that the front steering is destroyed. But it's looking pretty good. And I, I think my question is, I mean, most people would say that this is a totaled truck, and mm -hmm. I think I would agree. Mm -hmm. um, but – in terms of the salvage market, mm. do you think that you just need to fix up the front steering? Fixer upper. It's a bit of a fixer upper. Yeah. And maybe the rear as well. And ignoring all the cosmetic damage, do you think it would still drive? Yeah, maybe. A little, little <laughs> suspension work. All right. Yeah. And here we see a Cybertruck that ran into a pole. Um, so it definitely looks smashed up. But I do wonder what a normal uh, car would look like. And you can see the pole. Oh, yeah. And you can see the, <laughs> the bent front uh, front frunk there. Yeah. <laughs> so it's definitely – you can crash the car. This is not a video game object right. that doesn't, you know, respond to crashes. Yeah. Um, I just th – I thought it was neat to see because it just doesn't look the same as a normal car that gets into collisions. Yeah. Where did you get all these pictures, by the way? Of course, our sponsor, Cybertruck Owners Club. Um, there you can find all sorts of Cybertruck news and discussions with, from Cybertruck owners and future owners. Oh, and you know what I can do today? I can update their spreadsheet telling them uh, when you can get your truck. I mean, that's it's true. really great because all this data is going to help everyone know a bunch of people in Massachusetts are getting their trucks now. So yeah. that's cool. So Zach and I are so happy to announce the launch of our latest channel, Now We Adventure. We invite you all to check out our first episode that just went live, our 40 plus mile e-bike trip from Boston to our home. It's a trip I never in a million years thought would be possible. I mean, driving from Boston, then 40 miles plus to our home is like this crazy traffic filled nightmare in a car. It's dangerous highways, dangerous intersections, not to mention it's over 40 miles. So the thought that we could travel between the two on e-bikes seemed like a fantasy. But Jesse figured it all out, and uh, we got this cool route, and some newly built bike paths were built in Boston and Somerville that made it possible. If you're into biking, e-biking, scootering, hiking, walking the dog, pushing a stroller, or even just going for a relaxing walk, we think you'll find our new channel, Now We Adventure, a lot of fun. Now, on a personal note, 
I am already one of the luckiest fathers in the world. I get to work with my son every week on this show. Getting to go on these e-bike adventures together for Now We Adventure and then share them with you and our audience has been one of the most enjoyable and special experiences of my life. So we're hoping to have a new adventure video up on our Now We Adventure channel every two weeks. Yeah, a huge shout out to our editor, Brian, who went through countless hours of footage and built these episodes with these amazing maps so that you can see where we are at all times. And so that you can do these adventures too. We're starting off obviously in our home state of Massachusetts, but now that our solar mobile trailer is nearing completion. And with our new cyber truck to pull it. We'll hopefully be venturing out further and further around the country and beyond. So please share with us in the comments section ideas for trips that we should take. We want the Now We Adventure community to be as awesome as our Now You Know family. And I can't wait to start filming season two, starting hopefully this week. Yeah, we just need New England weather to get a little bit warmer. Because we just had a big snowstorm over the weekend. <laughs> So over on our Now Let's Review channel, we just reviewed something that I think every EV owner at one time or another kind of wishes that you had. We reviewed the EV Dance J1772 extension cable. And you know what I'm talking about, right? You get to a level two charger, and for one reason or another, you can't get the cable to reach your car. Whether you're being iced or it's just the way the charger and the parking spots are laid out, you just wish you had a few more feet or meters of cable. So go check out our review on Now Let's Review channel and see if this extension cable might be just the ticket for you. All right, so Elon reposted this from The Boring Company. Congratulations to Swiss Loop for winning the 2024 Not A Boring Competition, dug to victory with a novel extruded tunnel liner. Thanks and congrats to all the teams who have participated. Hope to see you again next year. And maybe you subscribe to Swiss Loop because they've got tons of cool photos of all of their experiences at the competition. And don't forget, the 2025 competition is opening soon. So if you want to dig tunnels, join. That's exciting. All right, so while Elon might not be getting paid to be CEO of Tesla, Jim Farley, the CEO of Ford, just got another pay raise. How much did he earn in 2023? $26.5 million, which, by the way, was a 26% pay increase from the previous year. Wait, what? Yeah, Jim got 84% uh, of his potential annual bonus, even though Ford missed targets for their EV sales and their connected services revenue growth. But he is good at pointing at things. So, Jim, as we decide on your pay for this year, uh, what have you accomplished? Lots of things. Uh, like, for instance, the Ford E-Transit electric van sales are up 148% year over year. Uh, my numbers show that we only sold 2,891 E-Transits in Q1 of this year. I like to think of the percentage increase, though. It sounds bigger. Okay, what else, Jim? Ford is now number two in the U.S. EV market. We have the best-selling electric pickup truck with 7,743 sold. In Q1, Tesla was just ramping production of their Cybertruck, and they still nearly beat us. And since you cut two-thirds of the jobs building the Lightning, won't Tesla be beating us in that category probably in Q3? I, I don't think so. Why is that, Jim? I mean, Tesla has over a million Cybertruck reservations. I, I don't know. I think it's kind of funny looking. Well, let's continue, Jim. What else did you accomplish that makes you deserve $26 million? Mach-E sales are booming. Isn't that because you slashed prices by thousands of dollars? Well, yeah. Customers seem to like that. Yeah, I know they like that, Jim, but we here at Ford would like to be profitable. What's that now? Remember, I'm not the CFO. I'm the CEO. I'm really not a numbers guy. I'm much better at pointing. If you're not happy with the numbers kind of stuff, maybe you should be talking to John. Now, it, it says here that you're delaying the three-row electric SUV we had planned to come out with next year? Yeah, I think people like hybrids better, so we're going to wait on the electric Explorer until 2027. Then, I think they'll be ready for it. Won't Tesla have a sub $25,000 EV by then and a robo-taxi? What's a robo-taxi? Oh, oh, you mean like from that movie Total Recall? That was weird. That freaked me out. I don't think so. Uh, Jim, can I be frank with you? Sure, Frank. If it weren't for the fact that GM is run by Mary Barra, we'd probably be out of business by now because Tesla is kicking our butt. We need a CEO who gets it, Jim, who understands that the future is electric and who can bring compelling cars to our lineup. No, no, I get it. I am hip to that. I have a prepared sentence here that my staff worked on all night. This is really good, Frank. They put a lot of words in here. Check this out. Once you hear this, I promise you, you will be signing my bonus check. Here goes. Our breakthrough next generation EVs will be new from the ground up and fully software enabled with ever improving digital experiences and a multitude of potential services. And, and, 
get this, we have a Skunk Works team. We hired Alan Clark. He used to work at Tesla, and we're developing a smaller electric SUV starting at $25,000, just like Tesla. When's it going to be released, Jim? Well, did I mention that we're going to have a multitude of potential services? Mm, we're all right, back from a little hiatus is our buddy Will from the Tesla Jigsaw YouTube channel. Hi guys, I'm just back from London after attending Everything Electric, previously known as Fully Charged Live, when I've seen so many exciting things I don't know where to start, so I'm just going to blast you with two minutes of footage and chat over it. When I attended the first ever Fully Charged Live event in 2018, there was something like 10 EVs on show. Fast forward to today and over 100 electric vehicles were on display, but I couldn't help but notice a few car companies missing. Tesla took centre stage of course, followed by BYD who perhaps had the most cars on display. Then there was Great Wall Motors with the Aura 3, formerly known as the Funky Cat. MG showed off their new Cyberster which was pretty cool, along with another dedicated MG stand. Plus Volvo showed their rather lovely EX30. There was also a Hyundai stand, a Mercedes stand. Notice anyone missing? No Ford, no Volkswagen, no Stellantis, no Toyota, no BMW even. Where are these legacy car companies, I wonder? Some of their vehicles were here, but being used as display models for rental and leasing companies, amongst other things. Could it be that they see no point in promoting their EV offerings as they'd sooner sell you an ICE car? Crazy conspiracy theory, I know. What was lovely was hearing people commenting on how quiet and fume-free the building was, given that test drives started inside. I spoke to countless people who were just at the beginning of their EV journey and had taken a test drive for the first time. The old butts in seats movement is still just as powerful today as it ever was in waking people up to the advantages of an electric car. Oh, and I thought of you when I saw these too. The entire XL Arena also had these water refill stations throughout, each displaying the number of plastic bottles saved thanks to refilling flasks. There's my top tip from someone who hasn't bought a plastic water bottle for 10 years or so. Carry a refillable bottle wherever you go. It's always better to reduce and reuse rather than to recycle. If you want to know more, I made a little video about the Everything Electric show. Check it out on YouTube at Tesla Jigsaw. Zach and Jesse, I'm still loving your work after seven years of watching your show. I just want to say thanks for all you do. You're the best. Now you know. Thank you, Will. Definitely go subscribe to Tesla Jigsaw for more fab content from our friend across the pond. So Sawyer Merritt posted Tesla owners in South Korea just held the largest Tesla light show in history with over 1,000 cars. Check this out. Oh, my God. That is so complicated to do, <laughs> yeah. like to make it into a TV screen. That means that every car needed its own custom light show program. I know, right? And, and then, then they, they had to park to, it in the right place. Park them in the right place. That's insane. That yeah. is probably the most expensive screen in the world. I think it it might even be more expensive than the Sphere. Really? Oh yeah, because you're right. The Pixels each are <laughs> you know seventy thousand bucks or whatever they are. So yeah. I'm eh, you know I don't know. Somebody do the math on that. And get back to me. That's pretty cool. Ellie is on a plane to Japan, so we'll have to wait till next week to check in with Ellie. But there's still a lot of SpaceX news to talk about. April Fool's joke coming up. Okay, everyone. April Fool's joke. Uh, Starlink said reliable high-speed internet, even where you least expect it. Starlink app updated with Mars mode. And Elon said Starlink helps fund humanity getting to Mars. So it yeah. doesn't work on Mars yes. yet. Space Sedua said on behalf of the entire spaceflight community, I request Elon to do another Starbase tour with Everyday Astronaut. And Elon said, okay, great. And then Elon gave us a SpaceX update. Uh, so really cool 45-minute video you can go watch. Um, basically some highlights here. There's going to be two towers at Starbase, two towers at Cape Canaveral. There's 2.7 million Starlink customers as of today. Starship Flight 4 is coming up, right? And if they pass doing a virtual tower landing, then Starship Flight 5 could actually be caught by Mechazilla. And Elon said 80 to 90% chance of success. So much more in the talk. Go check it out. Farzad has a good uh, chopped up edited version. Now, I, I just have a question. What is that big uh, nose cone? That's a big nose cone. Mm. Is that, it looks like a little house. Yeah, I think that's going to be the size. I mean, I think that's Starship, but down closer. Oh. It's just scale. It looks so much bigger. I know. It's huge. It's nine meters that's, across. I, I see. It's 
farther away. Yes. yes, I see. <laughs> and Elon showed this slide during his presentation of the newest version 4 Raptor engine. And Marcus House posted, it is almost hard to believe that the materials in Raptor can take these insane pressures and temperatures. With Raptor 4, I wonder how close we are to the limit of the material science for such a thing. Elon said, Raptor operates close to the ragged edge of physics, hopefully higher thrust. Long-term goal is 330 tons of force. Sean McGuire posted, about $10 billion a year of launch costs to build a self-sustaining colony on Mars mind-blowing. And Elon said Starlink should be able to provide that. So wow. you take the money from Starlink, which is already an amazing business, and then you build a Mars colony with it. <laughs> SpaceX has the goal of completing 150 missions in 2024. And they are making good progress. Get this, SpaceX launched 12 Falcon 9 missions in a single month. Wow. Elon reposted SpaceX's post that Falcon 9 launches 21 Starlink satellites, including six with direct-to-cell capabilities to orbit from California, following the first successful demo of direct-to-cell texting in early 2024. And SpaceX tweeted 275th landing of a Falcon 9 rocket complete as the first stage safely lands on the A Shortfall of Gravitas drone ship. SpaceX posted the Polaris Dawn Dragon is heading to vacuum chamber testing, and Elon said this will be the first commercial spacewalk. Now... If you haven't watched the Netflix documentary on the Inspiration4 mission, I urge you to watch it. This will make more sense if you do that. The same mission commander as Inspiration4, Jared Isaacman, will be commander of the Polaris Dawn mission, which, as Elon said, will include the first commercial spacewalk. Also, three people who were supporting the Inspiration4 mission the first time around, we have Anna Menon, Sarah Gillis, and Scott Poteet. They will now be astronauts going up in Crew Dragon to space. Polaris Dawn could be launching as soon as this summer. You can follow the Polaris mission at Polaris Program on X. And I'm just so excited to see Sarah get to go up because she was such a big part of the first mission. Yeah. I mean, they all were, but. And then Elon confirmed Flight 4 next month. This is Starship Test Flight 4. Oh, so much cool stuff coming up in space. All right, it's time for Into the Future, as if we haven't had enough there. Sponsored by our friends at Henson Shaving. Henson makes the best razors on earth, and you can get yours with a box of 100 free blades if you use the code now you know at checkout. So here's a story about how hard it is to make an autonomous humanoid robot. So let's take one of the world's largest, most experienced manufacturing and engineering companies in the world, Hyundai, a $37 billion market cap company with 300,000 employees worldwide, and see what they're up to with their latest robot. Um, where is it? Oh, it's, is it inside the box? No, no, it's behind the box. Is, is it, is, oh, that's not a person in the background, right? That's a, that's a robot. And it's a, it's no, to no, trick us. So no, what, what, what? No, no, it's right there. It's, it's the black and gray box thing that you said with the with the screen on top. Look, here's, here's another picture of it for you. What is that inside of it? That's coffee. Uh, Hyundai made Dal E, their new electric robot that can deliver up to 16 cups of coffee. You're, you're kidding, right? Oh, this is an April Fool's Day joke, right? Okay, no, no, that... No, 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 I'm serious. Hyundai will be rolling out Dal E at a building in Seoul, Korea in Q2. Dong Jin Hyun, executive director of Hyundai Motor Company and Kia Robotics Lab, explained in the future, it will be used in various spaces such as offices and shopping malls. So Hyundai thinks that this is a good way to compete with Tesla Bot? What do you mean? It's got AI face detect. It's got optimal route planning and an 11.6 inch display. It's been certified by the Korea Internet and Security Agency with a 99% accuracy. But someone has to fill it with coffee. And then when it gets to its intended coffee recipient, how do they know which coffee is theirs? Good morning, Cindy. Your coffee is the third one from the right. Second row back. Don't take Howard's coffee or he'll get mad. He yelled at me yesterday. Okay. Well, it will look good next to Optimus. It'll kind of look like R2-D2 next to C-3PO. True. Which is funny because more people, I just want to point out though, more people like R2-D2 than C-3PO. Right. That's maybe what they were going after. So maybe that's what they were thinking. So, so Optimus can keep kicking it and, and saying, you know, knock it off, he, Well, Optimus is going to be a lot more cautious and then, and he's going to walk, we're going to make him walk funny. Is that the idea? I don't know. I don't know. All right. It's time for going green. You know, we hear all these funny stories all the time that tell us that EVs aren't really green. Well, you know what? Let's use the scientific method and let's actually see what the data says about EVs and not what some fudster pulled out of the okay? How about this new study from UC Berkeley published this week in the journal Environmental Science and Technology that studies emissions between 2018 and 2022 across the San Francisco Bay Area. And they found that yes, indeed, 
emissions dropped by 1.8% per year, a difference that the researchers attributed to widespread EV adoption in the area. Yeah, did you know that EVs made up nearly 40% of new auto registrations in San Jose and 34% in San Francisco last year? So Ronald Cohen, a University of California Berkeley chemistry professor and the senior author of the study, said, We show from atmospheric measurements that adoption of electric vehicles is working, that it's having the intended effect on CO2 emissions. And even if you don't care about CO2, researchers were able to track five other critical air pollutants like carbon monoxide, nitrous oxides, ozone, and PM2.5. And we've talked about PM2.5 particles before. These are nasty. These are so small that they cross the blood-brain barrier and cause a lot of health problems. So they used 57 sensor nodes across the area. They should contact our friends at uh, Clarity because they spent about $10,000 per station. And I'm pretty sure Clarity could have done it for way less. I agree with you. Yeah. Check out our interview with Clarity. Um, all of these air pollutants, by the way, are trending down because of EVs replacing gas cars. So share the study with your fuddy coworker when you hear they say some BS story about how EVs aren't really clean. Because guess what? Science proves that EVs are way cleaner. Science rules. All right. It's time for Sunspots. So for the first time ever, solar beat out coal in Texas. Last month, March, not even a super sunny month, solar in Texas sent 3.26 million megawatt hours of electricity onto their grid. And how much electricity did Texas make by burning coal? Only 2.96 million megawatt hours. So coal has now dropped to a 9% share of Texas's power grid and solar has increased to more than 10%. That's awesome. Yeah, and look at this steady increase here of solar on Texas's ERCOT grid every year on this chart from the U.S. Energy Information Administration. And in fact, Texas is the number one state for solar capacity. And this news about the decline of coal in Texas is a big deal because Texas has historically been the number one user of coal for power generation in the United States. And if you're like, well, that's just Texas. Well, hang on, bucko, because the IEA shows that for the first time nationwide across the entire U.S., coal's share of electricity generation was less than 15% every day in March. Yeah, in fact, on March 29th, coal's market share hit a record low of just 11.25%. And that's the first time that has ever happened. Now, the reason we report on all this great renewable energy news is because you rarely hear about it in the mainstream press. In fact, you wouldn't even know that a renewable energy revolution was taking place if you didn't seek out what's really happening around the world. Wind and solar is cheaper and cleaner and keeps coming to us free every day. No need to fight wars over it. No environmental disasters to clean up. And no pollution filling our lungs. And look, if you want to go solar for less, talk to our friends at Energy Pal. They know all the rules, they know all the tax rebates, and they can get you solar and batteries cheaper than you can. Just let them know that Zach and Jesse sent you. All right, it's time for our video contributor stories. And this is where you guys become part of the show. We need your story. Send them into hello at nowyouknowchannel.com. Two minutes or less. They can be way less. They can be 30 seconds. Film them in landscape or else Jesse gets mad. Good audio, no music. And uh, here we go. What do we got this week? Troy sent us this story about using auto park in a tight parking space. It's tricky with these pillars here. There's like not a lot of room. Like you can see the pillar encroaches a bit. So let's, uh, I think this is the spot. Let's give it a shot. my mirrors because I don't trust it to not hit everything. Oops, sorry about the video. Mm, it's getting pretty close. Is it going to pull forward? Yep, good. It's adjusting itself like a secondary maneuver here. This is what I have to do usually at least once. I'm gonna clip the mirror on that pole. Ooh, that was close. <laughs> okay, I am thoroughly impressed. It's pulling forward again to recenter itself. I mean, there is like no room in this spot. This is, I would have guessed it would fail here. Ooh, I don't know if I would have trusted it. <laughs> wow, what a good job. It did a great job. I think I couldn't have parked it myself I know. better than that. That's amazing. All right, it's time for our Patreon bonus stories. And on Patreon this week, we've got so many stories just for our patrons. We got the new Mercedes-Benz CLA EV. 
Tesla hosts 1,000 students, your own AI, a Rivian update, BYD's new pickup truck, and more, including uh, Investor Club bonus stories and so much more. You can see these stories for just a buck a month. Head on over to patreon.com slash now you know and support us. Keep independent journalism strong and get all these Patreon bonus stories. And you know what? You're really missing out if you don't join us. So come on, what's stopping you? We'll see you wonderful patrons over on Patreon. All right, we're back from our Patreon bonus stories. It's time for the poll. Do you think that the Tesla RoboTaxi will first begin in China? And that's because Elon tweeted, Tesla RoboTaxi unveil on 8-8, eight, eight, and eight is a lucky number in China. What if he had said 7-7? Seven, seven? Would we have gone like, it's a, the United States? <laughs> what if he had said 420? We're, we're not as super. <laughs> it's gonna be Colorado. <laughs> uh, so the polls are, oh, patrons think I'm wrong. Nope, it'll be hitting the roads in the US first, they say. Wow, all right. I guess they're right. I don't know. Well, I think I knows? still think it's gonna be China, but who, who knows? knows? Who knows? All right, it's time for Elon's X's of the week. And uh, Doge designer said media is reporting April Fool's pranks as news. <laughs> Wait, <is there? laughs> Yeah. They, <laughs> shocker. <laughs> maybe, maybe people... Nowadays, don't learn about April Fool's Day being a joke. I don't know. I've never well, liked like, April this Fool's one, Day. I, I almost like, dropped my coffee when I saw this one. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Mr. Beast is quitting YouTube. Right, and Elon said yeah. that he should. And he should. I mean, it's it's been uh, it's been tough uh, for us as a platform just because they've been uh, really suppressing our content. Yeah. I was watching, I think it was Shadowversity. Um, it's like a sword YouTuber that I watch all the time. And they've been they've been crushing his channel as well. Oh, because he probably has swords in the thumbs, right? No, they just, they they, just they're doing like this him. to lots of older channels. Yeah. So if you would, take a minute to unsubscribe and resubscribe to the channel. Um, maybe just try and trick youtube at their own game just to let them know that like you do want to be subscribed and that, and that you're still alive yeah elon said so many april fool's jokes that are actually plausible given the increasingly insane real things happening in the world mm. sean mcguire said 60 minutes has become an absolute trash outlet joining most of the rest of the legacy media and elon said true per bylan said the seen and the unseen read bastiat and elon said i have seen the unseen for a long time Alex says the Biden administration is flying illegal aliens to all these states. And Elon says whatever lawsuit was filed against the flight company and others who took migrants to Martha's Vineyard should be filed 100 times against airlines that did this. Live by the sword, die by the sword. Ashley Vance says probably my single favorite thing about 2024 is that John Carmack is sitting in front of a computer near Dallas working to make an AI unlike any other and that almost no one is paying attention to this. And Elon says I am. Mm hmm. Cremieux says the most common number of children for American women to have these days has quickly become zero. Fermat's library says in 2023, Starlink began offering high-speed internet to researchers in Antarctica. This came 30 years after the establishment of the first real-time video link to the continent. And Elon said, cool. Doge designer quoted Elon saying, I think we should significantly increase legal immigration. If someone has a track record of working hard and hasn't committed crimes, they should be welcomed. And Elon said, that is indeed what I have said many times. Alexander Mertz says, when can we finally vote on your new compensation package, Elon? You deserve it even more. Elon says, the support is super appreciated. I obviously don't need the money personally, but am concerned about not having voting power to influence Tesla to do the right thing. Elon went on to say, I'm cool with adults doing whatever they want, so long as it doesn't harm others, but kids need to be protected at all costs. Jason Calacanis says, putting all context aside, I'm so here for 72-year-old Walter Isaacson tossing a protester out of a presentation, let alone the protester highlighting their boo-boo on Insta after. And Elon said, good for Walter. Shibatoshi Nakamoto said, Chipmunk tries an almond for the first time and has a religious experience. And Elon says, so much better than an acorn. Elon says, bet you didn't know that this administration is flying hundreds of thousands of illegals into America using your tax dollars. Shibatoshi Nakamoto said, who would win? And Elon said bear. No, he's wrong. It's it's definitely going to be the gorilla. You think it's the gorilla? Yeah, the look bear? at the strength numbers there. Come on, buddy. The, I know the other which, numbers are... Which number? The strength at the bottom, 4,400 oh, pounds. Interesting. Plus, they're smart. Okay. I don't know. All right. Elon said business insiders bleeding money. Their days are numbered. And this is in response to their <laughs> article saying that Elon Musk is having a terrible year, which is not true. <laughs> At all. Musk University had this quote from Elon. Who wrote the software running in your head? Are you sure you actually want it there? And Elon said, maybe not. X News Daily said news. A tip off from X's child safety team played a key role in the arrest of a distributor of child abuse materials in Ohio. The prosecutor in the case has said. And Elon said, good. Um, and then responding to this little funny uh, cartoon of the government meddling in the price of houses. Elon said, absolutely. There are so many regulations. The building has become practically illegal. Elon said, without freedom of speech, we are just a slave in the matrix. Blake posted, Biden administration sets world record for illegals entering the country. And Elon said, the PSYOP is doing real numbers. 
Alex posted that Blinken says Ukraine will become a member of NATO. Elon said this is literally how the nuclear apocalypse movie starts. Yeah, when I was a kid, I saw The Day After and I was freaked out for like a month. And then I just watched it again yesterday and now I'm freaked out again. Yeah. This is annual installations of industrial robots in 2022. And Elon said, China is a powerhouse next level. World of Engineering said the human body produces about 25 million new cells every second. Elon says we are a mobile cell colony of 30 to 40 trillion cells. Jonah says, I'm weird, but I put Louisiana hot sauce on my eggs. And Elon says, I do too. It's amazing. OSINT Defender said, I would recommend that everyone go and fill up their car today because gas might be about to get really expensive. And Elon said, yep, That's because of the eclipse. Really? Which already happened if you're watching this now. Yeah, you've seen it, but you haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it Was it, it good? Well, I'm going <laughs> to tell you about it next week when I have seen it. Farzad said, RoboTaxi will kill public transportation in my estimation. And Elon said, yes. Ed says, how long do you think our civilization will last? Elon said civilization needs to retain its current technology level until Mars is self-sufficient, which could be achieved within roughly 20 years. If we become multiplanetary and then multistellar, our civilization will last millions of years. If not, maybe just a few hundred years. Better fill up that tank. The Associated Press says anonymous users are dominating right-wing discussions online. They also spread false information. Elon says the AP is responsible for more false information than all anonymous accounts combined. It's not even close. What I think is also funny is that... Um, a lot of times the news won't tell you who said things. It'll just, a source familiar with the matter has lied to us and told us something untrue. Yep. Reuters. <coughs> <laughs> Michael Schellenberger says Twitter files Brazil. Brazil is engaged in a sweeping crackdown on free speech led by a Supreme Court justice named Alexandre de Moraes. Elon said this aggressive censorship appears to violate the law and will of the people of Brazil. Paulo says, yes. So why comply? Rumble and locals didn't. You're powerful enough to make a difference. And Elon says, we're lifting all restrictions. This judge has applied massive fines, threatened to arrest our employees, and cut off access to X in Brazil. As a result, we will probably lose all revenue in Brazil and have to shut down our office there. But principles matter more than profit. He went on to say content restrictions in Brazil have been removed. Good for him. Yeah. All right, it's time for community mail time. Community mail time. Remember, this is where you guys get to share your photos and stories with us at hello at nowyouknowchannel.com. Makes the show really awesome, in my opinion. Ryan spotted this VinFast VF8 in San Francisco. Walter saw this black wrapped Cybertruck in Diamond Bar, California. Rob spotted this Rivian delivery van making a drop off for waste, not composting in Illinois. Nice. Les spotted this house with a Cybertruck, Model Y, and Starlink in Cape Coral, Florida. Caroline sent us this picture of a purple Roadster that she saw at the Cars and Coffee event in Lafayette, Colorado. Willie saw this orange Model 3 at the Atlanta airport. Drew spotted this two stall beam solar car charger with battery in Rock Island, Illinois. Steven sent us this picture of the Cybertruck that he spotted in Missoula, Montana. Miranda saw this Ford F-150 Lightning in Tacoma, Washington. Joel spotted this Rivian R1S in Lubbock, Texas. John saw this bright yellow Model Y in Everett, Washington. Andrew spotted this Optimus inside the Tesla store in the Westfield Garden State Mall in Paramus, New Jersey. I wonder if at night it kind of wakes up and walks around. <laughs> Vico saw this wrapped Model 3 in Helsinki, Finland. And Ron saw this orange Cybertruck on Easter morning in Upland, California. Nice. I, these are colors I did not expect to see. Mm. All right, it's time for EV tip of the week. Remember, you can send us those as well at hello, now you know, channel.com. What do we got for this week? Alejandro sent us this tip about the underseat vents in the Model Y. Hello, Zach and Jesse. This is a story of my poor dad when he tried to find a sound coming from our Tesla. Six months ago, a simple beach trip with my family turned into a puzzling mystery inside my Tesla Model Y. A rattling sound under my seat led me on a quest. I searched everywhere, asked everyone, but the elusive source remained a mystery. It took the Tesla Service Center's advanced tools to finally rescue a tiny toy from beneath the driver's seat, a reminder of how easily our drives can turn into detective stories. Lucky for me, it was a free rescue, but not everyone has been so fortunate. That's why I now recommend these under-seat covers for your Tesla. They're simple, effective, and can save you from unexpected service costs. Affordable, stylish, and sanity saving, these covers protect your vest from unwanted guests, ensuring your Tesla remains just the way you love it. Thank you. I did not know that. I probably have a lot of stuff down there that I've been looking for. <laughs> I had the same thing happen to me. I had to pull it out, um, but luckily it wasn't as deep. So, yeah, go get those vent cover things. That's awesome. All right, it's time for Supercharger Reviews. This is your job. Go out there, review the superchargers in the world, and report back on our website. Let's see what we got this week. Hey, we're at the Supercharger over here on Highway 119 and 43 Enos Lane. And we got a Subway, Pizza Hut, a Taco Bell, 
There's not really anything else around here unless you want to go into the gas station. There's some new construction over here behind us. Don't know what's going to go into there yet, but there will be something interesting in there. We've got 10 stalls here, and it uh, looks like we have about half of them filled up. So there's quite a bit going on. I think I'd probably rate this with all the amenities, maybe a 6 out of 10. Hey Zach and Jesse, I live nearby this brand new V3 supercharger in Rocky Hill, Connecticut. Less than a mile off of I-91, so very convenient for coming up from New Haven, heading say north to Springfield. This would be roughly the midway point. And it has a restaurant nearby that is open till, uh, open seven days a week, open till 1 a.m. most days, and then Friday and Saturday all the way till 2 a.m. That restaurant is right here. It's called Arch 2 Bar and Grill. As far as other facilities, well, we've got 12 stalls, so that's good. Brand new, just literally opened yesterday. I just did my first V3 speed supercharging, testing my long range here at a full 250 plus kilowatts, so that's good. Let me um, show you. Car wash and hotel. Now there's not much for sidewalks, so the car wash is the blue roof here, hotel over here, and finally a golf station where possibly they might have a 24-7 bathroom. Um, without sidewalks, other than a little bit here, getting to those other places, you might end up driving if it's say the middle of winter trying to get to some other spots in the area if it's the middle of the night. But all quite possible. These are the precast units, so you'll see they arrive cabinet, and four stalls all arrive precast, all pre-assembled on the concrete. They're dropped off in three units of four, so 12 stalls total. So thank you for all you do, Zach and Jesse, on your channel. And hopefully you found this overview helpful for this brand new supercharger location. Over my shoulder, you'll see a sign showing all the different businesses in this little strip mall. Very easy on and off to I-91. Bye for now. Hey, Zach and Jesse. I'm doing a supercharger review in Kingman, Arizona. This is a new supercharger with uh, 16 units, 250 kilowatts. Uh, just set up uh, near the Kingman Vi Visitor Center. Uh, the old one is over at Carl's Jr. And it's uh, not a great location, but this one is a wonderful location. I, I want to give you, uh, I want you to see what, what's happening around here. Uh, as you can see, uh, the Kingman Visitor Center, and then this is kind of a Kingman Visitor Center City Hall. And the nice thing is that it's got electric, an electric car museum with all sorts of uh, old electric cars, including a Tesla uh, original Roadster. So I would give this uh, this supercharger uh, a 10 out of 10. There's also across the street an old style uh, Joined out of the 50s, a lot of nostalgia here, that's wonderful. Anyway, uh, now you know, thank you. Hey Zach and Jesse, this is Matt, and I'm here at the Lawrence, Kansas Supercharger. It looks like they just opened today. I would give this Supercharger an 8 out of 10 because there's a McDonald's with very nice bathrooms and a gas station for anything else you might need. And this is a cool one because it's a service exit, a left exit off the highway, off of a toll road in Kansas. Pretty good location. Now you know. Route 66. Nice. Nice. Haven't been on that route in a while. Nice. We should do that in the Cybertruck. That'd be fun. All right, it's time for new superchargers in the world. We got quite a few. Number 28 in Tennessee is the 12 stall in Union City, Tennessee. Number 162 in South Korea is the 6 stall in Suwon. And the Chinese superchargers are back. We got the three stall in Fushan, China. We got the six stall in Nantong, China. The four stall in Beijing, China. The three stall in Chengdu, China. The four stall in Waifang, China. The two stall in Quangdao, China. The three stall in Quangdao, China. Number 101 in Taiwan is the four stall in Taiwan, Taiwan. The three stall in Taizhou, China. The four stall in Shaoxing, China. The three stall in Sanming, China. The three stall in Quanzhou, China. The three stall in Guangping, China. The three stall in Kangzhou, China. The other three stall in Kangzhou, China. That's if you're going Shanghai bound. The three stall in Handan, China. The three stall in Shenyang. The three stall in Tianjin. The three stall in Haifei. The three stall in Yanchang. And number 2016 in China is the three stall, 250 kilowatt in Jiang at Starlight Park Shopping Center, China. 
Number 14 in New Hampshire is the eight stall in Epson. Number 43 in Oregon is the eight stall in Sisters, Oregon. Number eight in Malaysia is the four stall in Penyang. Number 16 in Thailand is the three stall at Pratrap Curry Khan, Thailand. 24 stall in Pomona, California. The eight stall in Paso Robles, California. Number 161 in Texas is the 12 stall in Ozona. Number 183 in France is the eight stall version four at Gap, France. And number 448 in California, number 2235 in the US, number 6264 in the world is the eight stall in Arnold, California. Arnold, it's Arnold. Arnold, California. I was watching Total Recall this week. <laughs> so good. No, it's not. It's not. I did not hold up. No. No. <laughs> That's bull. <laughs> Best movie ever. <laughs> oh my God. I'm so excited to be getting our Cybertruck. Yes, but you know what? Massachusetts is one of the stupidest states in the country in terms of buying process, right? I've heard from so many other people that are like, what are you talking about? You go and you buy the car 10 minutes later, you're out. Not in Massachusetts. It is like a month long affair mm -hmm. where the dealer is required to send paperwork to the registry and then to the insurance agent. And then they have to stamp it and talk about it. And uh, oh, it's going to take us so long. I, I know. So I'm not trying to get my hopes up about when we take possession of the Cybertruck, but I am really, really excited. And I mean, there's so many EV shows coming up, but I'd like to take it to, right? Our buddy Jerry's having one soon. Jeff is holding his April 27th, by the way, uh, at the Hebert Candies in Shrewsbury. So April 27th, be there. And thank you so much to all of our amazing Patreon patrons. Remember that we can't do this show without our patrons. I've been looking at the YouTube numbers lately. Oh my God. Um, just in terms of ad revenue, uh, this show uh, does not work. It's never really been able to work. Uh, we have, we do kind of have a little bit of a niche in terms of content. Uh, it's becoming a little bit less niche, I would argue, but YouTube really has its sights on making sure that YouTubers don't make enough money to support themselves. That's where amazing patrons like you come in. Um, if you would like to help support this show and all the work that we do. Yeah, and we give back. I mean, I gotta be honest, like yes. we're about to go do like an hour more of content and really good content for just our patrons. Right. So go check it out, see if you like it. And last week on our Investor Club bonus stories, we did a, basically, I think it was close to one hour ride along. Um, because you know we had to run some errands anyway. That's so right. Yeah. So you can see 12.3 like in first person view, kind of. Yeah. So be sure to give that a watch. Uh, and and thank you so much to everyone who supports us. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Unsubscribe. Resubscribe. Uh, you know, send some videos to your friends. Go to the Now You Know Clips channel. There's lots of stuff that you can do to help us out over here. I hope that we uh, bring you some value every week. We'll see you next week. Now, now you know. know.